Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about today on a very cold winter's day on the uh, GSXS 1000F once again. A uh, bike that I've been riding for the last week or so, been getting to know it, and uh, in this video I'm going to share with you the top five things I love about the bike. So if you're interested in the Suzuki, stick around and stay tuned, and I'll give you my top five things I love about it. Okay then, to the uh, first thing on my list of the top five things I love about this bike, and it's something that's very sub uh, subjective, something that probably splits opinion on this bike I guess, and that is its looks. Now personally I think this particular bike looks really epic. It's kind of a cross between a Hayabusa with its curves and a GSX-R1000 with its uh, sportiness. It's the sort of bike, particularly if you had it in black, the sort of machine that Batman would ride. I personally think it looks really nice. Maybe not with this touring screen that I've got on this particular version, but with the standard screen, it's a great looking machine I think. You may disagree, it is a subjective thing, but that's number five on my list of the top five things I love about the GSX-S F1000. I may have got those around the wrong way by the way, but you know what I mean. <laughs> that is the bike's looks. Got to be very careful around here today, it's about one degree, so it could be that there's a bit of ice still on the roads. Not be doing anything too mad, but it is lovely to see some blue sky. Okay, so to the next thing on my list, the top five things I love. Number four on the list, and this is something that's not actually uh, particular to the GSXS 1000F. That's a real tongue twister. I'm gonna have to stop saying that. But in fact, to all four-cylinder machines, I don't own a four-cylinder bike myself, so it's always novel to me this one. Whenever I ride one, and that is just the smoothness of the engine on here. This engine is derived from a, a GSX. R engine from about 2008, or the, the sports bike that came between 2005 and 2008, I think. So it's super powerful, it puts out something like 147 brake horsepower, but because it is a four cylinder machine, it is really, really smooth. And I absolutely love that about the bike. So that makes uh, number four on my list. Of course, it being a four cylinder does mean you have to uh, stir up to get her into the rev band where the power comes but right the way through the rev band she's beautifully smooth crikey busy down here in uh, Wendover on a Saturday morning okay next up on my list of the top five things I love about the bike then is allied to that four cylinder engine actually and it's something that I may be able to demonstrate on a slightly faster road in a second so uh, let me get up the road a bit and hopefully uh, I'll be able to demonstrate it okay so here we go this is uh, number three on my list now it may not be obvious because obviously I'm using the mic in the headphone here but number three on the list is the sound this engine makes when you do get it up into the uh, rev band, unfortunately it's going to be difficult now behind this car. There's a slightly bit of faster road up here, but it absolutely screams and it sounds epic. I'll show you again in a second. Okay, here we go. Faster bit of road coming up. I'll leave her in second gear for the demo. Bit of space, nice and dry on behind. Listen to this. Oops, wind got the better of us there, <laughs> but I hope you got the gist. Alright, so the sound of the bike is pretty epic then, hopefully uh, you got a bit of that through the mic in the uh, in the helmet, not the best recording device to capture the sound on the bike. Okay, to number two on my list then, and that's something that, uh, maybe not very exciting, but it's something that's certainly very uh, important when you're buying a new bike, and that is the price of this bike. It's absolutely outstanding value for money. I'll stick the price on the screen because I haven't got the actual figure to, to hand, but it's less than 10 grand this bike. It's an awful lot of bike for that. As I say, 148 brake horsepower, great wind protection, uh, all the electronics you need. It's just, a, it's just a great bike for less than 10 grand. I know it's been around for a while and that may be why Suzuki priced it so keenly. Who knows, maybe there's an update of this bike coming. I, I've got no inside information on that. But nine grand and something for a 1000cc sports tour of this quality 
it's just excellent value for money. So that makes another two on my list of the top five things I love about the bike. It's value for money, it's brilliant. Okay then, so, to the number one thing on the, the top five things I love about this bike, and again, this isn't a particularly sexy thing, but uh, I genuinely do believe this about this bike. That is its practicality. It's an honest, it's an honest motorcycle, this. It's got all the electronics you need and no more besides. It's got uh, great wind protection. It's got that epic motor and power. It's got comfort. You can use this all day long to ride to work. You can use it to go touring on. You can have fun at the weekends with the 1000cc 147-ish brake horsepower engine. It's just a great, honest, practical motorcycle, this. And for that money as well. So that's the top thing on my list. It's a good, honest motorbike. And I don't mean to say that in a way that makes it sound somehow boring. Because this thing definitely isn't boring. Okay, on a dank winter's day like today, I can't really be exercising it to show you what it's like at the top end. But on a summer's day, on some nice warm roads, this thing would be absolutely epic when you wound it up. You really need no more motorcycle than this. I think it's a great bit of kit. I've been really, thank you sir, pleasantly surprised riding this bike over the last couple of weeks. Oh yeah. So by the way, if you're interested in uh, the kit that you've seen me wearing in this video, stick around and stay tuned to the very end of the video after the credits and uh, I'll do my now infamous fashion segment and take you through all the bits and pieces that I've been wearing and uh, that will just save me answering all those comments about what was that helmet you're wearing etc. So I hope uh, this video has been of some interest to you. Do stick around and stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in the Suzuki GSXS 1000F. There's got lots more to come on the channel including uh, when I get to the end of the period, the loan period of, I've had with this bike, I'm going to be doing my in-depth review where I'll bring you not only the pros and cons of the bike that I've learned, not just the good things but the bad things too. No bike is perfect is it? But uh, I'll also be showing you what it's like to ride the bike in different weather conditions, different times of day, different sorts of roads, and bringing you my sort of long-term conclusions. Well, not so much long-term, because I only would have had the bike for a couple of weeks, but my in-depth conclusions, the sorts of things you wouldn't necessarily know if you just rode the bike for, say, an hour on a test ride from a dealer. So stick around to the channel, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and that way uh, I can make sure you don't miss that video. All right, that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed that. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. and Fly. Cheerio. Okay, so thanks for sticking around to the very end of the video for my now infamous fashion segment. Uh, and I'll just talk you through the stuff I'm wearing, just to save uh, answering all those questions in the comments of what were those gloves you were wearing, or what was that helmet you were wearing, or whatever. So uh, starting off with the helmet, this particular helmet is called an HJC Rafa 11. This one I've got is in uh, Nacri Carbon. I've got a couple of these helmets. They're really lightweight. I think they look great. Uh, I'm a massive fan of these HJC helmets, and particularly the, the Rafa 11. It fits me well, it's super comfy, and I think it looks good. Uh, in terms of cost of these, if you want one, this particular one is uh, currently, let me just look it up, £383.99 at Sports Bike Shop. And I'll stick a link below to everything that I'm talking about. And full disclosure, the links below are affiliate links. So if you click on those, uh, I d it does help the channel. I do get a little bit of commission, but it's at no extra charge to you. So just to be completely upfront about that. So that's the helmet, Rafa 11 from HJC. Love it. Next up, I mentioned them already on the video, but these, my uh, gloves, these are my uh, Kais G701 gloves. They're brand new for this year. I've been wearing Kais heated kit for ages. See, they've got the little uh, buttons on the back that glow. I've got them on the middle setting at the moment. These are waterproof. Uh, they've got, they're different this year because they've got um, little pads on the fingers so that you can actually use your phone with them. Um, they're protective, they're comfortable, and most of all, they keep you properly warm on a cold winter's day like it is today. Massive fan of heated clothing me. These are the Kais G701s. Really recommend them to the house. Excellent pair of gloves. Oh, occurs to me, you can probably hear me better without the crash helmet on. Okay, next up then, uh, this, my neck buff. Absolutely love this. It's from my website, which is www.themissendonflyer.com. It's just eight quid if you fancy one of these. Okay, the serious stuff then. This, my jacket. This is a Dane Nimbus Gore-Tex Pro jacket. Um, it's an amazing bit of kit. Gore-Tex Pro is like the top level of Gore-Tex that you can get. I think it's basically three layers or two layers. I think it's a tri-laminate, whatever that is. Uh, but it is properly waterproof. I've been absolutely drowned in rain uh, in the last week. And this thing has kept me absolutely dry. You just shake the water off, it's brilliant. And the beauty of it is it keeps you warm as well. 
in the winter, this is definitely the warmest jacket I've got and I've uh, really enjoyed wearing this uh, over the last year. As I say, Dane Nimbus jacket is very expensive. Uh, let me just check the price. £874.99 if you want one of these. Is an awful lot of money, I know. But if, like me, you ride motorcycles all year round, then uh, it really is down to having proper kit to keep nice and warm in the winter. Uh, with this on, I always stay warm. So I do recommend it, but I appreciate it. Very expensive. Going with the jacket, the trousers, let me just point the camera down a bit. Here we go, these are the matching trousers that go with the jacket. These are called Dane Lingby trousers. Again, they're Gore-Tex Pro, very expensive, but very warm and keep you properly dry. If you want a pair of these, £529.99. So you're looking at, uh, what's that? Uh, 874 sort of 1400 quid for the whole set if you want it but uh, I think it's money well spent they last forever they've got CE rated um, protection and uh, they're just really good I can't recommend them highly enough right last thing while I'm down here my boots these are uh, also Gore-Tex I'll try not to hop around in front of the camera. These are from TCX and they're, they're uh, Gore-Tex. They're called Baja GTX boots. GTX standing for Gore-Tex, I guess. And the price of these, £239.99. Again, I'll pop a link below. But uh, the beauty of them, again, being Gore-Tex, is not only do they keep you properly dry, but they keep you really warm this time of year as well. Anyway, there we go. That's the kit. I uh, hope uh, that was of some interest.